Hey guys, how's it going? Cartoon Carl here, back again with another How to VR video. Or I guess, maybe a more appropriate title would be How Not to VR. Alright, in any case, this might be helpful to some of you out there who want to get basic VR functionality into their games. Specifically Unity 5 titles. Alright, so in this series, I go more in depth into the hacking and the modding and all of that kind of good stuff that goes into getting games into VR. It's really an excuse for Daigo and Ed to take a day off. Well, what Daigo said was he wanted to go touch grass. Ed assumed that meant getting rolling papers, putting the grass inside it, wrapping it up and smoking his brains out, so needless to say. If he had legs, he would have been kicking as well as screaming as Daigo dragged him out the door. Alright, that being said, what are we doing today? Well, today, you know, as Oppenheimer, <laughs> as Oppenheimer said regarding the atom bomb, just because we can do something, maybe we should stop and think, should we? Alright, and that's very much true of this. So what we have here is Dark. Dark, it's a 2D side-scroller, well, more accurately, 2.5D. That is, it takes 3D assets, but it plays out in a 2D style side-scrolling game. And it's a fantastic little puzzler, fantastic game. Now, using VRGen template, link in the description, what we have managed to do is get the game into VR. But should we? Okay, once you boot up the title, you might notice the menu screen is not exactly where it should be. It might be above you, it might be below you. Just hit F12, that will center it. Okay, now you're able to get in-game. So, as you can see, we have a comparison here. We have the original flat screen version on the bottom. That's how it looks if you were to play this flat. And then you've got the unaltered VR version in the background. Now, as you can see, there's certain lighting and textures that are missing in the VR version. It's not a big deal. Okay. But gee, it's in 2D. And you can absolutely play it that way. And actually, maybe that would actually work. <laughs> But how we do things here with VR5 games is we try to get things as immersive as possible. Now, what is more immersive than a first person perspective? Okay. Well, aside from a computer brain interface, nothing. <laughs> so, okay, here's what we gotta do. If you don't already have this installed, go ahead and look for it on Steam, it's free. OVR Advanced Toolkit. Search for that. Install it. It has a Steam VR overlay, so it'll just appear there. Very handy. Alright. Go ahead and open that up. Alright. Go to Offsets. Okay. So the first thing we got to do is, as this is 2.5D, we're looking at the world side on. Okay. That's not ideal. Again, easy fix. Look where it says Camera Rotation. Rotate that 90 degrees. Now we're head on with the world perpendicular. Okay. Now we gotta get our position relative to that of the character. Now this is kind of the tedious bit. So you gotta move it in small increments, the camera, left, right, forward, and back. Okay. Just continue to do that and oh. Well, he's a handsome double. Just continue to do that until you get it into the right position. Now, you might notice as you move the character forward and back that the camera shifts. So you may need to adjust that ever so slightly, just so you don't clip through your own head, etc. So, let me just clear the air a little bit here, because there seems to be some misconception out in the wild as to what it is we do here. At Fiorified Games, our main aim is to get games to be the most immersive they can be using uh, software and technology that's available to us. Now, many people out there have assumed that we're calling ourselves modders or we're modding. That's not entirely accurate. A more authentic way to describe what we do is hacking. What we do is we take existing software solutions. Say, for instance, a game has a first-person mod here. There's a 3D injector there. This kind of thing. We'll put them together. We're hacking together a VR mode. It's not so much modding. And okay, it can be argued that it's a thin line between hacking and modding. That's true. 
But the main difference is, modders make a dedicated piece of software. They also make the barrier of entry really easy to get in. Now this is something we strive for ourselves, but realistically speaking, we are not modders, we are hackers. So okay, just wanted to clear the air. Alright, well let's go through the process. So you want to repeat this yourselves with another Unity title, or even this one. These are the steps you would have to go through. Okay. So this guide refers to Unity titles only. And I should stress that this only works for a certain amount of Unity games. So there are two patches out there that exist. There's VR Gen Template, which hasn't been updated since 2018. And similarly, there is Right Apartus VR Patcher, released in the same year and not updated since. Now, strangely, I found that if a certain Unity 5 title will not boot with one, it will boot with the other, and vice versa. I don't know what is going on, but it does seem to be potluck, and just because you fail with one patcher, doesn't mean you should give up. Try it with the other one, you might be surprised. Okay, so to get to those patchers, just go to the link in the description. Download them. Simple as that. Alright, the use case is actually identical for both. Now, you can't have both instances at the same time, so you need to load in one or the other. If it fails, delete it, put the other one in. So, okay. Once you have your files downloaded, open them up. Copy the contents of whichever patcher you want to try first. Paste those into the game directory. In this case, we already know a VRGIN template works with Dark, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Alright. Here we go. This is the really tricky bit of getting VR in, okay? I want you to watch along carefully. Take that EXE, now this is really difficult, super modding stuff, and paste it onto the, in the case of the Urgent Template, IPA.exe. If of course you're using Rikabarda's Unity VR Patcher, that would be the VR Patcher.exe. So just go ahead, grab that EXE, and drag it on top. That's it. Super difficult. <laughs> Once you've done that, all right, you're ready to play VR. Now, if you're using the Steam version, I want you to right click on the game, go to properties, and disable Steam VR theater mode. Just disable it, don't need it. If you're using the Epic Store version like we are, go to settings, Go down to where the game is located, in the settings. Extra command line prompt, and type in dash dash VR. That's it, you're ready to play. Now, just be aware, once you're in game, you will not see button prompts like you would in the game proper. So, this is strike one against putting this game into VR. Strike one, straight away, you cannot see the prompts. Now, if you're familiar with the game, or you're familiar with what certain items are, like gears, etc., then you'll know that you can pick them up. It's just a case of hovering nearby and uh, pressing the button. But say you've never played this game before and it's your first time, oh man, that's a big no-no. Alright, and once that's done, Abracadabra, you are in the world of dark in VR, and I gotta tell you, they put some level of detail in here that you will never see in 2D. It's crazy. And it looks really, really good in this kind of weird, twisted, Tim Burton esque world that you're in. It looks great. So, okay. As you can see, we're now moving the character. Everything is great. So far, so good. Apart from what was the strike one? Button prompts. They're not there. So, say if you didn't know this. All right. You do have to lay down on the bed, and there is a button prompt telling you to do so. You would not know that if you were playing this in VR and never played it flat. So, yeah, it's a pretty big problem.
okay. So let's go ahead and do the whole sleep thing, get into the dream world. Okay, here we go. Okay. Here we go for strike two. The original game camera is static. Okay, it, it's not dynamic, it doesn't move, it's static. Which you think would be fantastic for a viewer. And that would be true, if not for the fact that this game you walk on walls and you walk on ceilings. Okay, so while your player character will change the perspective, the camera does not. So although I'm walking up a wall, I'm looking directly at my feet, if I don't move my head. Okay, if I'm walking on the ceiling, from my perspective, the whole world is upside down. So. That's a pretty big <laughs> strike against this game in VR. So as you can see, I'm now climbing up the wall and everything is skewed. I'm crawling on the ceiling, everything is upside down, it's topsy-turvy. Okay, so that's strike two. That's a little bit difficult to get your head around, you know. <laughs> okay, and here we go for strike three. Now, this is not a big deal, really, but as the controllers are set up for a side-scrolling adventure, it means left and right only, not up and down, as you would expect in a first-person perspective. So, you would need to use some sort of controller remapping software to kind of get around. Again, it's not a huge deal, but you need to set up a shifter, because once you turn around, remember, forward and backwards only, so once you turn around, backwards is forwards, so you need to put in a little shifter. So you swap what was originally left to right to forward to back, and then have a shifter from forward to back to back to front, if that makes sense. <laughs> Which it probably doesn't. <laughs> but okay, once you get your head around that, you're able to move forward and backwards okay. But it's a, it's a barrier of entry, and there's so many different softwares out there. Because I use a DS4 controller, DS4 Windows, and you're able to set up a shifter, so I can change the up and down mappings to down to up. And so when I turn around and I'm facing backwards, then everything is moving the way it's supposed to. And you're gonna get seasick real quick. Now. Remember what I said before about just because we can do something, should we? Now, the game was made in 2.5D side-scrolling for a very good reason. That's simply the best way to play the game. It does not work in first person. It just doesn't. There's contextual things that you will see on screen that you would never see in first person. So although the first person perspective is more immersive and you can look around and see the world in 360 degrees 6 DOF VR, unfortunately it does a disservice to the game. Now you can still play the game in VR in its original intended view and yeah it'll play great apart from the button prompts being missing and you will not need to configure a controller direction buttons. So, it is a question, is it even worth doing just because you can do it? And unfortunately in this case for Dark, I have to say no. Unless of course we can figure out how to view the button prompts number one and somehow be able to shift the camera views depending on our orientation within the world. Then it might become something compelling. But as of right now, yeah. It's one of those things that just because we can do it, maybe we shouldn't. At least for now. Now, I am intrigued by the title, I do like it. So Daiko and I may take a look at other ways that we can get this into VR. With a more traditional first person view, etc. We'll have a look and see. Because as you can see from this half-baked uh, demo I'm showing here, a first-person perspective is possible. Button prompts should be doable. So, who knows in the future, but as of right now, dark, first-person VR, kind of a write-off. Dark, side-scrolling VR, yeah, that's pretty good. Damn near compelling. 
So, okay. Guys, that's how you would do it for Unity titles in VR. So if you want to try this yourself and say, uh, some Unity titles you own, go for it. You've got nothing to lose except time, really. And if it works, whoo! Oh god. There are some uh, videos on our channel already where we've tried getting Unity titles into VR, and they work great, some of them. So it's definitely worth a try. For those who like to tinker, who like to hack, and ultimately, who like to mod. So, okay. I'm gonna leave it there, I guess. Uh, I don't know what Ed and Daigo would say about subscribers and Patreons and all that, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure Daigo will put some, something on the screen in the edit. Uh, yeah. 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 So, okay, I guess I'm gonna go. Uh, those guys are touching each other's grass or I don't know what the hell they're doing anymore and yeah okay it's the cartoon Carl see y'all in game